Mr. Sylvester, you stated that uh, the donations between Vote Leave, Be Leave, and all that were legal, right? Correct. And you also mentioned the court case. You, you knew about the court case in the UK, right? Yeah, I, um, I was made aware of that by, uh, by a gentleman at Vote Leave. That it, and it went through the courts that it was legal to make the donation? Yeah. Is it legal to coordinate? Are you talking about UK, UK election law? No, coordination is not legal. Anymore. Coordination is not legal, but donation is legal, but coordination is not, right? Correct. Okay. So you start, you're doing work for Vote Leave, and how does Believe know about you? Not how they got paid, because that's okay, that's, that's allowable. How do they know about you? I don't know how they came to know about us specifically, uh, but I do know how they contacted us at first, and that was via email, and I think I provided that uh, Yeah, that's fine you. how they contact you by email. How, uh, my question to you is how did they know about you? Because at the time... You, you would have to ask Mr. Grimes. Uh, well, I'm asking you. At the time, is, was this, this was the sum total of your, your Facebook page. It says, Aggregate IQ, changing the way you work with your data. Now, you're a small company in BC. Mm -hmm. How does Believe no, to contact you. This is all that's on your database, right? This is your Facebook page. Mm -hmm. I'll repeat it. Aggregate IQ, changing the way you work with your data. Yeah, that was, that was an old. Was that your Facebook page at the time? Yeah, we don't use our Facebook page for marketing or anything. That was old from when so we So how did you market yourself to Believe? I, I didn't specifically market myself to Believe. How did they know about you? I don't know. But as I said, that would be a question for Mr. Grimes. So, okay, you don't know how, how they knew about you. How did uh, the DUP know about you? Um, I don't know exactly. I know that. So, how did Veterans for Britain know about you? Uh, I believe we reached out to Veterans for Britain, and then they got back to us. So, you decided, but I don't have. You the, decided that you reached out them for them for what reason? Um, I believe uh, Mr. Massingham had um, had heard that they were looking for. Someone, Someone had told him they were looking for help. Okay, who told Mr. Massingham? I, I don't know. You don't know that. And I asked Mr. He doesn't. He doesn't recall specifically. No, I'm sure he doesn't. Um, I I did check because you asked. I did look through email communications and provided all of that to you. So. So if I understand this, you never went to the United Kingdom during this whole time. Is that correct? I have been there, but not during Brexit. Not during the Brexit vote. Not the lead up to Brexit vote. When a coordination may have taken place. No, and I, again, like I said, I don't but believe coordination took place. Did Mr. Massingham go to the UK prior to the Brexit vote? Yeah, he was, in, he was in the UK for a period of time then, yes. So, though donations are legal, coordination is not. Mr. Massingham goes there, and suddenly he knows about Believe, and you don't know how they know about you. Well, we can assume it's not through your website, and you did no marketing to them, right? but somehow they know and you don't know. But Mr. Massingham now is in the United Kingdom and that makes him subject to their jurisdictions. So this coordination took place. You are the centerpiece of that coordination, correct? No. So you, again, I've how said- are you, how, are you, how, do they not, how do they know to coordinate with you? How did they know to ask Mr. us to do Massingham, work for them? Mr. Massingham there reached out to them. How, who, who told you to coordinate? You said someone told you to get a hold of Veterans for Britain. Who told you to do that? I, I don't know. Who told Mr. Massingham and, to and, do and, that? And to be clear, I, I don't know that that is exactly the case. As I said, I went through the email communication to try to find the answers to your questions, and, and you that, have a I provided what I found. Uh, you have a customer that shows up to spend 600,000 pounds and you have no idea how they know about you, how they well, showed up, and, and you do the work, not knowing that you're gonna get paid by vote leave. Well, we knew once we you got spent, the money You have to spend the money, then you, add, then you invoice, right? No, not with B-Leaf, no, first. Not with, not with B-Leaf. No, you said, because look, again, we didn't know them for anything. Uh-huh, so but they you said, did know, but did you know when they asked you to do the work, that did they tell you vote leave's gonna pay for me? They told us they got a donation. They didn't originally tell us the source. Uh, they got a donation. They didn't. They got. They paid directly. Correct. But they, so they vote had been paid informed that they were getting they, a donation. They, okay. They they informed you that vote leave is going to do. But that. then, but then it was transferred directly to us when we told them when we gave them the the invoice to, or the. the I submit order. to you, Mr. Sylvester, that yourself and specifically Mr. Massingham were coordinating this, and that uh, and the fact that he did it when he was in the United Kingdom. 
irrespective of what you say in your letter that we are not subject to the jurisdictions of their offices and their laws, when you were coordinating with them in the United Kingdom, specifically Mr. Massingham, you were breaking their laws. And when you were doing it in Canada, you were again aiding and abetting in a crime. You helped by coordinating this effort and that is illegal in the United Kingdom. You aided and abetted that crime. You happen to be sitting here in, in uh, Canada, and that may or may not protect you. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. But Mr. Massingham was in the UK when he was doing it, and that makes him subject to their laws. So with respect to crimes, no. Uh, I don't believe any crimes have occurred in this regard. With respect to us aiding and abetting, no. We've not aided and abetted anyone, to our knowledge, because it requires a knowledge of it. Uh, if, if someone else was doing some coordination through the campaign that we we're unaware of, if you're, Mr. You're, if you're, Mr. You're, Gettleson was sharing information, I don't know. You, to your knowledge, you're not abating betting. However, you knew very well the rules about donation. You knew about the court case. You told me about that. You knew about all these laws. You knew enough to tell the commissioners that you're not subject to the jurisdiction. You have Mr. Massingham stating, I got it here, that we follow all the laws where they, we operate. Correct. That's his words. Correct. But clearly, he was in the United Kingdom operating and not following their laws, and you were here operating, not following their laws. Except for he was following their laws. No, he wasn't, because it was, illegal, not... to, it was illegal to coordinate. But we weren't you coordinating. Stated, you said that it was illegal to coordinate, and you're and at we... the center of this coordination effort. Correct, but we weren't coordinating. You were at the center of this coordination effort, and you just said correct, and that means Except you were for aiding and abetting in the coordination, which is a crime. So we'll, we'll can I say just one thing? Allow you to finish, and, and then we'll, we'll close it, that it, line of question. It, this is it, see, there is an investigation right now by the Electoral Commission into all of this in the UK, and they're working through it. It's their job to determine if anything illegal happened. If if, if they come out and say something we did was wrong that we were unaware of, okay. But I don't believe that's the case. And so for you to say this is illegal, like you, you're not a lawyer and you're not, you know, you're not in the UK and you don't have all the information, it's that type of assumptions that have been a real problem. And, and, and there's a lot of miscommunication. But all I can do is tell you what I know. I know we didn't do anything wrong. What you told me you know so, is this. You're not subject to their jurisdiction. That's what you told me. That's what you put in writing. That's what, in fact, you didn't tell me. When I asked you the question the first time, you didn't answer me that. I found that out when so I went through the document. Mr. Bayless, uh, thank you, Mr. Sylvester. I, before, first, I just want to impress upon uh, you the disappointment of this committee in the failure of Mr. Massingham to attend, and I encourage you to impress upon your colleague uh, the significance of this and that we are going to go uh, uh, we're going to have a conversation as a committee about how to proceed and we're going to discuss the potential of moving forward with a finding of contempt. So I'd encourage uh, your colleague to attend before us and, and come forward with dates that he, that he can make himself available. Um, provided, we provided the information why he, he couldn't attend to your clerk. And well, I, very limited information and look, I, I got a lot of friends who are lawyers and... That's fine. That's, and and, and when, as that process it, unfolds, you, you, we're happy to participate. You've clearly lawyered up and, uh, and frankly, the information you've provided is inadequate.